It means that signal. We need more power. I won't make you guys wait any longer. Please give a round of applause for Rose McIver. So how's it going? Great, thank you guys so much for coming out. Appreciate it. Have you enjoyed the con so far? Seen any like good costumes or anything? I'm only an hour and a half deep, but I am <laughs> really enjoying it. There have been some great costumes. I haven't seen enough lives yet to satisfy me, but um, I'm, I'm tough like that. I'm tough on you guys. <laughs> well, before we kick it out to the audience, I have to say I'm a huge fan of I Zombie, and um, that finale was like one of the best finales. Wasn't it amazing? It was incredible. So walk us through when the show picks back up for season three. Are we picking right back up where we left off? What can we expect from that premiere episode? Yeah, I think um, it's about three minutes after. Three minutes okay. after we, where we leave off at the end of season two. And um, it's still pretty chaotic. And we are going to try to work out what film or graves are all about. Um, we've got at least now Beba knows, as we're saying it. Beba and Clive knows about Liv being a zombie. So we have like a good little community to, to kickstart the, the season and all trying to deal with it together. It feels like a Scooby gang, kind of. It feels like we're all, we're all out solving these mysteries together to an extent now. So it's a slightly different dynamic, but, um, but still Liv takes on the characteristics each week and we'll see a lot of familiar things too. Okay, great. Um, okay. Hi. What are the brains made out of? <laughs> that, I had that question too. What are you eating? They're real human brains, which is <laughs> weird, but it seems to work. Um, no, they're like gelatin. They're gross. They're gelatin with corn syrup. It's gotten to a point now, that's like the only thing I feel like I'm a real diva about. I'm like, I am not swallowing this stuff unless you guys are like really, really need it. So we have spit buckets and we have all sorts. They're not good. <laughs> Sometimes when you guys cook them and prepare them on the show, it actually looks tasty and then I feel gross after. I'm I know. Like, oh, well, hungry now. Oh. This, is, this is the thing, is the recipes, are, some of the recipes are actually quite good. If you take the brain part out, the like stew is really good. Or I mean, I remember we had this turkey chili broth that I got the recipe for afterwards. Um, we just did one, um, it's probably a spoiler, I'll probably get in trouble, but we did this chai latte. Weirdly, that was the worst one I've had, and I, that was an easy thing to get right. I was, I, I took aside our props, go like, come on, Mark, what's going on? This is just like a lukewarm, bad. Uh, it tastes like off almond milk, you know. <laughs> that didn't have to be like that. Thank you. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, I like to know how's it feel knowing that you've taken such a unique part in the history of zombies, not only in visual media, but just in media in general, mm -hmm. taking such an interesting turn, uh, kind of crossing borders, really making the undead have a new spin on it. I mean, it's, it's an honor um, to be working with Rob and Diane, who've created this sort of subverted idea of, of the zombie genre. I think, like, um, there's a reason it's been popular for decades now, and I think that other shows do what they do incredibly well, other films, we've got Walking Dead, we've got Night of the Living Dead, all these things that to try and mimic that would have been a, possibly a weaker choice. And so to be able to be in a reinvention of it and like in a, in a way that we're very self-aware, I feel like um, it laughs at itself, which I just think is the only reason it works the way it does, because we are a zombie drama, romance, comedy, procedural, like we've really gone for everything. So if we're not gonna laugh at ourselves, we'd be in trouble. I personally think a lot of it has to do with just your acting in general. It's oh. amazing. Every episode you put on a different spin and you're just very likable, very approachable. Thank you. Just, just thank, thank you. A lot of it's the writing, honestly, but thank you very much. <laughs> Hello. Um, I would like to know, um, how was it, like how did you feel when you got the part? It was pretty surreal. I was doing a like a ballet movie at the time, so I was playing a ballerina and on the weekends was going, I, I found out I booked the job and within two weeks we started shooting the pilot. And in the interim I was playing this ballerina, so I would go on the weekends for these like frantic costume fittings and um, wig fittings and try to develop a zombie, which the two didn't seem to go hand in hand so well. Um, it was pretty surreal. I was thrilled because I knew the caliber of the writers and 
when I saw the other actors that were involved in, in the department heads that they'd hired, it was it's a huge pleasure and it's continued to be. It's one of those things. We're going into episode three we're shooting right now of season three and we still kind of pinch ourselves and we're so grateful because it's I'm sure it's not always um, that you get to work with people of this standard so I'm, I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> uh, gosh, um, if I became a zombie, I think Liv is pretty inspiring. She's managed it pretty well. Like, I wouldn't want to kill people, ideally. It's not on my kind of to-do list. So maybe, like, um, working somewhere with already dead people seems like a good start. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I would be shocking. I'd be terrible. I'd be more scared of, like, the idea of a zombie apocalypse when people say, how would you, you know, would you run, would you hide? I'm just such a coward. I would be terrible. I'd put on a bike helmet to, like, try and sort of steer away that's like, a start that's you know, smart it's a start um, it's accessible I have one at home uh, but I don't know I'd be useless I'm glad I'm playing somebody who's much more savvy than I am <laughs> thank you thank you okay it's a bizarre one it's definitely not people's guess I don't think but has anyone here listened to cereal yeah, yeah. okay Adnan I want to eat Adnan's brain so bad Adnan's I'll take um, uh, what's his name What's the Making a Murderer guy? Stephen Avery? I'll take him. Yeah. I'll take... I want to just be able to give people an honest account of what actually happened. Because you just you can never know. We're always speculating. And, I mean, whatever, everybody's got their opinions on whether people did and didn't do things. But just to be able to get that, like, clarity about these highly contentious crimes. I'll do that. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the chance. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Rose. Hi how are you oh. doing? My question is, how long does it take in the makeup section? Because you change very much. It's weird. It doesn't... It <laughs> It used to take a long time. And now we have these, like, wizards. The hair and makeup team is so great. And because I get constantly, like, fucked with all day, you know, touching, they're really good about just trying to get it done as quickly as possible, get in and out so we can kind of do the job and work on the lines. So we've got it down to about an hour and a half, which... Is means I sort of start Monday mornings is like 4.30 or something to be for a 6 o'clock call time. Interestingly though, Raul, who plays Ravi, has a similar um, call time. So <laughs> trying to tame the, the hair and the beard and the eyebrows, it, it, that has been its own journey. So I feel like we sit in the chair for a similar length of time and I'm playing a zombie. So it's kind of my little win, you know? <laughs> also... How, does it take long to like switch into your American accent? Because it's really good. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, it's oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, I mean, I grew up listening to a lot of American and British film and television, so those accents were pretty familiar. I am. It's different schools of thought. Some people keep them all day when they're working. When I spend most of my life, honestly, at work. Um, I don't really spend a lot of time not at work when I'm shooting, and, and I just can't imagine having to pretend to be somebody else all day, every day, and not have little tiny breaks. So in between setups, even when I'm receiving direction from like a director, I'll communicate in the scene in my New Zealand accent, and then go back into an American accent. I just think that's something I've had to, had to make sense of in order to stay sane. So uh, thank you, though. I really appreciate that. That's very kind. I love the idea of eating Lucy Lawless's brain. Xena or my friend Five of Concords. I think that could be really good. Melanie Linsky, who we we I'm so keen. I know she. I like follow her schedule. She's a friend of mine, and I keep trying to wait till there's windows and put the pressure on. Um, there's tons of there's tons of Kiwis whose brains specifically I want to eat. I feel like um, what would be the characteristics that stand out the most? Here's one of them right now. Um, maybe. Like, we can, be, we can be very laid back. I heard a really good comic, actually. This is talking about an Australian, but it's a similar thing, where he said, when you ask an, an Australian, but I'm going to say a New Zealander, a question, um, they don't give you an answer. They tell you what the answer isn't. So it's like, you'll say, like, how far's the beach? Oh, not far. And like, what time are you going to be there? Oh, not too soon. Like, it's, we just don't. We're so indirect. We're amazingly indirect. We never answer questions. Um... How's your day going? Not bad, you know. <laughs> it's just always that. So maybe maybe some of that stuff I'd throw in. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I was just curious which Rob Thomas wanted to kill off Rob Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rob Thomas 
2.0, we call them. Um, so Rob Tom original Rob Thomas is our um, showrunner, and Rob Thomas 2.0 is what we very offensively say to the original Rob Thomas. Um, they had become friends on Twitter because of the constant confusion. They get sent stuff for each other all the time. And it's just so our Rob Thomas. Oh, O-R-T. O-R-T, that's what he's going to be. Original Rob Thomas um, is... It, he just loves like playing with those kind of ideas. Once he found out, you know, that the guy, that, turns out that Rob Thomas 2.0 was a big fan of the show, and when he reached out to him and said, you know, would you be interested, he was like jumped at the opportunity and was like, just be warned, it's not going to go great for you. Like, don't expect to come back. <laughs> but um, but you know, if you wanted to come up, and he came up and he shot during our finale, which was that Tupara that was so um, dense to film. I, I'm so proud of it. I think they did a really great job. But it was, it was like exhausting. It was a really crazy schedule. And Rob showed up and he hasn't had a ton of acting experience and he just like was in the deep end, um, lying on the concrete with like prosthetics on his head for hours and hours and hours and was like just so down to earth and great about it and fun. We really, we all really loved him, got along great. And we're actually gonna go see his concert soon. So it's been a, it's, he's coming up to play in Vancouver. So it's become like a, a, a friendship, which is really nice. And I thought he did a great job. Um, I felt so sorry for the mercenary who had to sing in front of him one of his own songs. I was like, that's cruel. Like, <laughs> it's like having to like run in front of Usain Bolt or something. You know, you just don't. Certain stuff you don't want to have to do. <laughs> Thank, you very Thank you very much. Hi. Um, Hi. I was wondering, what was the most challenging brain for you? Uh, I actually really didn't enjoy playing the Archie Bunker kind of bigot, like that, that character at the start of season two, um, it was challenging not, I mean, there, there have been physical kind of elements of other ones or uh, things that I've had to really think about, but in terms of just getting over having to play a character who I fundamentally just didn't like, um, I found that, weirdly, I found it harder to remember the lines, I found it harder to engage with the other characters in it, it just isn't somebody who I like, and I think it served the show really well, and it was making a point, and it, and it was exactly what we needed, but I don't think, um, yeah, weirdly that wasn't the one that stood out as like, I'm excited to get up and go to work and play this character in the morning, and that happens every single other character I've, I've had that, so that was an interesting one. Who she really connected with, it's heartbreaking. It's, it was intentionally heartbreaking, and it sets up why Liv kind of, for the second season, had like a, an even more kind of iron will to, to try to, sort out what's happening with like the zombie under, undercurrent, like the, the bad zombies, like to deal with that, having something so precious taken away from her um, was a good story device. So I understand why they did it, but I also understand how upset people were. Um, luckily, I have no doubt that Bradley James is gonna have plenty of work <laughs> and plenty of great opportunities. And it was great to work with him. I mean, we had a really good time. And um, you know, same with Greg Finley who played Drake. We, we've been really lucky, I think they've, explored some kind of different threads and different characters that Liv would be drawn to and whenever they do take somebody away as painful as that is for an audience and for us as characters who are like we've just been building all of this um, I think it's strategic and it's it, it creates kind of an even stronger part of Liv's history and reason that she wants to kind of overcome some of this stuff I hope that kind of answers <laughs> Thank you Thank We're you. all excited for it Thank you so much Enjoy the rest of your con